Hey, glad you could make it. Please grab yourself a cup of coffee and let's talk about EMS quality. We've talked a bit about EMS quality measures in the past, but I wanted to go back and revisit that topic and talk about ways that EMS quality measures can be categorized. Specifically, I wanted to talk about categorizing them as outcome, process, and balancing measures. Now, as you continue your quality journey, you're going to run across these terms, and I wanted to make sure you understood them and understood the differences between them. So let's look at these terms in context of how EMS takes care of STEMI patients. Quality outcome measures look at the final results of a process. So in STEMI care, this might be the mortality rate. Uh, we might also see people use the left ventricular ejection fraction or a measurement of the size of the infarct. And admittedly, we use these outcome measures recognizing that EMS only plays a part in determining the outcome of the patient. Obviously, the hospital plays a huge role in determining the outcome of a STEMI patient. Quality process measures reflect on how well the steps inside a process were actually completed. And ideally, those process steps should have a clear connection to a particular outcome that we're looking at. So going back to our STEMI example, the EMS first medical contact to 12 lead acquisition time is a good one to look at because the research clearly shows that the sooner we can get that 12 lead EKG, the sooner we can notify the cath lab, they can begin their preparations, and that decreases the total ischemia time. And we know from the research that reducing total ischemia time improves survival, reduces the size of the infarct, and improves the left ventricular ejection fraction. So that's a great process measure to use. So now let's move on to the balancing measures. Balancing measures are used to see if an improvement in one part of the process is actually causing some deterioration in performance in some other part of the process. So back again to our EMS STEMI care example. We might find that our EMS crews are frequently calling EMS STEMI alerts on patients that don't really have a STEMI. These false alarms, if you will, uh, are often referred to as overcalls or false positives or over triages. And in these cases, the interventional cardiologist oftentimes isn't even performing an emergency angiogram because the patients clearly aren't meeting the criteria for an emergency PCI. One thing EMS crews may do in response to this information is to become overly cautious about declaring an EMS STEMI alert. So in spite of our well-intentioned efforts to try to decrease the EMS STEMI alert overcall rate, it can have the unintended consequence of raising the EMS STEMI alert undercall rate. We have to use good judgment in balancing the EMS overcall rate against the EMS undercall rate, and that's why we call them balancing measures. So there you have it, EMS outcome, process, and balancing measures. They're all good things to use. They all complement each other. So I hope this has been helpful in clarifying these terms for you. I hope you also enjoyed your coffee. Now go out and try something.